Hi guys, welcome back to another QGIS tutorial. As you saw from the title, what we are going to discuss today is how to generate a 3D representation of a mining pit like this using QGIS. Now even though for the purpose of demonstrating the steps, I have picked an example of a mining pit. Once you get the hang of the idea, you could basically apply it to any other case that is similar in nature. So for this example, I have chosen one of the largest mines located in Australia and we can zoom into it. It's called Super Pit. And what I'm trying to do is I'm basically trying to reconstruct a model of this pit, a 3D model of it using QGIS. Now there are actually multiple ways of doing that, but one of the crucial or a key element in this entire process is going to be some sort of an elevation record which can sort of represent the variations or the elevation variations within and around this mining pit. And you probably might have to have it as a set of contour lines or it could be even a set of points, but somehow it's extremely crucial to have those elevation records in some sort of a form because to do this task, we are going to heavily rely on an accurate elevation data set. Now for this particular example, I have created an elevation data set like this, which basically has the elevation, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate for a set of points. Well, in this case, to be exact, it's 58 points. So for 58 different points, I have three key pieces of information embedded in this sort of a CSV file, which is the X coordinate, the Y coordinate and the elevation value. So as the very first step of transforming this data into a 3D model, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this data set into QGIS and I'm going to create a point data set out of this. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. And for the time being, I'm just going to switch this to OpenStreetMap and get rid of the Google satellite. And to import a point data set from a CSV file, you can go to layer and go to add layer and select add delimited text layer and from here what you're going to do is you're going to browse to the location where you have saved the particular csv file which in my case is going to be this file so it's called elevation points and i'm just going to select it and click on open and the file format uh, it's going to be csv which uh, gets selected automatically and i would like you to expand this geometry definition tab and make sure that you have correctly mapped these two columns to this X field and Y field. And in this case, our set of X coordinates should be mapped into this X field and the Y coordinates should be mapped into Y field. And it's extremely important to assign the correct coordinate reference system as well. And by looking at the numbers, if you have some experience working with coordinate reference systems, one thing that you can immediately notice is that these numbers do not look like latitude latitude and longitude values in decimal degrees definitely so i could directly rule out the fact that it's not going to be epsg 4326 and for this particular data set for this specific geographical region in australia that i'm working in my coordinate reference system is going to be utm zone 51s so i'm going to pick that from here and after that you can just simply go ahead and click add and the set of points should get added in this kind of a manner. So as you can see, this is the area of the mining pit. So you can see quite a bit of coverage through a number of points within the mine, as well as a few points in the surrounding area of the mine as well. Now, keep in mind that uh, these elevation values actually do not represent the real conditions. It's just a synthetic data set that I created in an arbitrary manner just preserving the shape of the mining pit, uh, but not really adhering to any of the real conditions that happen to exist maybe currently or even at any stage in the past. So that's something uh, that you have to keep in mind because I'm going to supply this data set to you guys as well, just so that you guys could uh, follow along the tutorial and create this 3D model by yourself. All right, guys, so you can see that we managed to import this elevation points as a point data set is what it looks like right now. But if you head over to properties of this layer and if you go to information, you will see that it's still not a point shape file. It's still tied to this original elevation points CSV data set. So what we need to do is we need to right click over here and go to export and 
select uh, save features as because now we're going to create a new point shape file out of this data set. So you can see the file format has been selected to be S3 shape file, which is exactly what I want. And I'm going to browse uh, to the folder that I'm working in, which is this folder right over here. And I'm going to name this as elevation points shape file. And make sure that you have selected the correct coordinate reference system as well in this case. And after that, you can click OK. And now we no longer need this elevation points CSV dataset. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And now what you could do is you could have a look at the attributes table of this newly created shape file by right clicking and and by going into the open attributes table like this. So you can see that we have three fields or three columns which shows us the X coordinate, the Y coordinate and the elevation value just like this. All right, guys, now we're going to rely on this point data set to create a seamless continuous raster. And to do that, I'm going to use a spatial interpolation method. Now, if I were to go to properties and display the elevation as a label of each of these points. Yeah, you can see how it looks. So the elevations around here range basically uh, between 350, 340. And as we go to this side, you can see that the elevations jump up to be about 390, 380, around that range. And this side about 370, 360, and over here 380 as well. But if you have a look at the points inside the mining pit, you can see that it basically drastically drops from 300s to almost about 200 over here, 190 over here, 194. So you can kind of imagine how the 3D model of the pit would get formed based on these elevations. So as I told you guys, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a continuous raster using a spatial interpolation method in order to fill for these unknown locations. And we actually have a number of different interpolation methods like Krigging, inverse distance weighting, spline, and so on. And for tasks like this, I have found that Krigging or spline interpolation method seems to work quite well. So for this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on the thin plate spline interpolation method. And to do that, you can go to processing, go to toolbox. And from here, you can simply search thin plate spline. And under Saga tools, you can see that right over here. And as you can see, you have to specify a few things over here. So the first thing is, of course, the point dataset, because this is the dataset that it's going to rely on in order to create values for these unknown areas based on the known values. And of course, to do that, the corresponding attribute that it needs to refer to is going to be elevation. And when it comes to the output extent, I'm just going to draw on the canvas and specify the limits like this, something that encompasses all the points and not really extending way further outwards from the furthest points. Because of course you can see that uh, the interpolation is going to be accurate only if you have a sufficient number of points. But if you were to just extend it without any reason, well, the interpolated values at the edges are not going to be that accurate. So it's pointless doing that. So, so I'm just going to keep it as a tight fit like this. And you can see that it automatically grabs the coordinates of the four extents and along with the corresponding coordinate reference system as well. And over here, we have to specify the cell size. Now to get started, I'm going to specify a cell size of about uh, 15 meters. And I'm just going to see how it looks. If it looks too big, then I probably might cut it down to about 10 meters or 5 meters. But if it looks all right, uh, I'm just going to stick with it. And apart from that, you can leave all the other settings in their default uh, values. And after that, you can just click over here on run. And with that, you can see that uh, it managed to create this sort of a seamless raster. You will start seeing the pixels only if you zoom in a bit too much. But in this kind of a zoomed out view, you can see that it looks very smooth. 
So if you draw your attention to this color bar that gets displayed right over here, you can see that the elevation basically varies from 166 all the way until 423. And the darker colors basically refer to deeper elevations uh, as you can see from here, which mostly corresponds to a majority of the parts within the mining pit. And much of the lighter colors are sort of spread around the banks of this mining pit uh, as you can see over here. And usually what I would do is I would actually open up the color ramp by double clicking right over here and change the render type to be single band pseudo color. And from here you can actually pick another color ramp, something that looks a bit more interesting than just having a gradient that changes from black to white. So in this case I'm just going to go with this uh, turbo color ramp where the lowest elevations will be represented in this sort of bluish colors and the highest elevations would be given in this uh, sort of a reddish colors. And after that you can click apply and OK. And now you can see how the colors basically uh, vary and you can see this sharp boundary where it shows the bank of the pit and all of these areas that are shown in blue color are basically areas inside the pit. And with that I'm just going to get rid of this uh, elevation points data set because I no longer need that. And if you'd like to check out the pixel values of each of these individual pixels, you can always use this Identify Features tool. And just right click over here and make sure that you have selected Target Grid, which is the newly created raster. And when you randomly click over any cell, you will see that right over here, the corresponding pixel value would get displayed. And if you can recall the elevation values around here was something close to around 350. So, and over here you can see that when I click uh, the values happen to be about 370. And over here it should be in the range of about 3, 380, 390. And right over here you can see that it even goes down to 171, 170, 180. Yeah, in the range of 200s. Alright, so the next step would be to display this as a 3D model. And to do that, I'm going to use an external plugin called QGIS to 3JS. And if you haven't used that before, then there's a good chance that you might not really find that with your default QGIS installation. So you'll have to head over to plugins and go to manage and install plugins. And from here, you can search for QGIS 2. 3JS, which is uh, this one right over here. And after that, you can just simply install that. It's going to take just a couple of seconds. And once it gets installed, it's going to appear under this web. And under QGIS to 3JS, you will find this QGIS to 3JS exporter. All right, after that, what you can do is you can select the target grid, uh, which is basically the interpolated raster that you generated you may or may not be really satisfied with how it looks in a 3D manner with the default settings. But what you can do is if you would like to sort of exaggerate how it looks vertically, you can actually exaggerate the vertical scale. And that's not going to change any of the original values, but just for displaying purposes, it's just going to perform a bit of an exaggeration based on a factor that we are providing over here. So to do that, you can go to scene and scene settings. And from here, you can see that the default exaggeration factor is one. Let's just go with a factor like five and see how it looks. Yeah, after that, you will have to zoom into it again. And if you think that that's a bit too much, you can always go back and change this to be about maybe three. It's just a factor that you have to play around and see which factor happens to fit well your intended purposes. Now, if you're happy with this, you could also double click over here and make sure that your resampling level is increased to the maximum because that can slightly increase the, the visual quality of this 3D model. Just click apply and click OK. And there are actually a few ways of enhancing the 3D look of this sort of a model. Now, one of the ways of doing that is basically adding a contour map on top of this. And another way of doing that would be to sort of create a mesh and drape that mesh over this surface so that it'll really give that 3D kind of a look. 
So I'm just going to try out both and I'm just going to let you guys be the judge of deciding which one looks the best. Let's first go with the idea of draping a mesh over this surface. And to do that, what you need to do is you need to create a grid that basically spans across the entire extent of this raster. And you can create such a grid quite easily by going to this Create Grid tool under Vector Creation. And when it comes to the grid type, I don't really want a point grid, but I would like to have a line grid. And the extent of the grid, I would like to have it covering the same extents of this target grid, uh, which is basically the name that I have right now for my interpolated raster. And when it comes to the horizontal spacing, now if you can recall, when I created my original raster, I gave it a cell size of 15 meters by 15 meters. Now I could specify the same cell size over here as well, but I think it's going to be a bit more overpopulated if I do that. So I'm just going to space it out just a little bit by specifying a horizontal and a vertical distance of about 50 meters for the mesh that I'm trying to create. Now I'm not really sure how it will look with this sort of a setting, but we can do a quick run and see how it looks before we sort of proceed to the other steps. So let's click run right over here. And by the looks of it, I think it's good enough. So we'll try to use this grid and the only change that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of this grid to be black and I'm going to decrease the opacity just a little bit. Yeah, to be something like this and I think I might even decrease the opacity just a little bit more like this. All right, after that, I can open up the QJS to 3JS window from here. And you can see that it automatically has been draped uh, over the mining pit. And if you think that the lines are a bit too sharp and it uh, sort of takes the attention out from this mining pit, what you can do is you can reduce down the opacity even further to be about maybe 33%. Let's see how that looks. And after that I can open up the Q, uh, QJS to 3JS exporter like this. And now you can see that it blends pretty well compared to what we had previously. So we can sort of enhance those 3D capabilities of this block using this sort of a mesh. That's one of the ways of doing that. And as I told you guys, the other way of doing that would be to sort of generate a contour map that covers the extent of this raster. And now let's see how to do that. So you can head over to processing and go to toolbox. Well, I already had that. And now just search for contour. And you can see the tool right over here. And again, my input layer is going to be the target grid and the interval between the contour lines. Now, if you look at the elevation variation, you can see that it varies from 166 to 423. So based on this range, I'm just going to pick a contour interval of about 20 meters. And the attribute name is going to be elevation, E-L-E-V. And with that, I'm just going to run this and see how that's going to look. Yeah, so as you can see over here, the contour map got generated. And similar to what I did before, I'm just going to change the color of this these contour lines. And probably I might cut down the opacity as well in this manner. And after that, what we can do is we can open up the QGIS to 3JS exporter like this. And you can see that this is how the mining pit looks with contour lines draped on top of it. And with that, we have reached the end of this tutorial. I hope the steps that we followed were clear for you guys. However, if you do have any questions, you can always add a comment down below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. And at the same time, if you did like this tutorial, don't forget to show your support by hitting that like button. And if you'd like to stay tuned for interesting GIS related tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well. And as I told you guys, I'm going to include this dataset in the description of this video so you guys can download the point dataset or well the CSV file and try to create that point dataset and 
generate those interpolated surfaces by yourself and i think that would be the best way to sort of uh, exercise your qga skills by doing that yourself so thanks a lot for watching guys i'll see you guys again with another tutorial soon